Yes, was it good or was it bad? Of course, the Game Awards were held. Jeff Keighley took the stage to um, yeah, celebrate the games. That's what they say, of course. And they had a few nominations for the best games and they had a few other categories. And of course, why we really watch it are the announcements and some gameplay. And they had some really awesome announcements this time, I feel. And um, we can really like applaud uh, Jeff Keighley for that to yeah, make sure that he got some awesome things. Of course, it's hard for him. Because why would Sony announce The Last of Us 2 there? Well, if they didn't have the PlayStation experience, they would probably have done it, right? So that's like uh, interesting. Tell us The Walking Dead Season 3 will debut in two parts premiere. So it will launch later this month. And they showed some gameplay of that. Halo Wars 1 Remastered launched this month. A Shovel Knight prequel announced. Um, they also had the first trailer for that. Then it's the um, Dauntless new PC co-op RPG. Then, of course, uh, that was already teased that um, the guys from Gearbox would be there and they announced Bulletstorm, full clip, $50 for a remastered game. But you can also play as Duke Nukem, so if you like that, go ahead. It will launch uh, this year uh, or next year. Did you saw the, uh, see the Prey trailer? Yes, I did. And what was interesting is that they also released like six minutes of gameplay after that and that looked really a lot like Bioshock. They, they were also like using this like weapon that you use in Bioshock all the time and uh, it was in space but I, I really liked what I saw. I think that they really have something in their hands here if they don't release it in the fall um, because otherwise it will just, yeah, no one will play it like this on it too. Um, then mm-hmm. new Death Stranding trailer, very weird um, and of course it has the Hannibal actor Matt Mickelson and of course also from uh, James Bond. Die another day. And uh, Mass Effect, this was like the real coming out party for Mass Effect. We had the trailer on N7 Day, and now we had gameplay. So that was pretty cool to watch. Did you see that? Yes, I did. Uh, I was pretty impressed with Mass Effect, uh, just overall, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It looked like the, the world was pretty awesome. It's just the gameplay that we, that we are used to. Um, and of course, the, it was a pretty extensive demo. And I think that they didn't like overhype anything. It was really this is what you're gonna get, and it looks great. Um, then we also had Guardians of the Galaxy game from Telltale. Like I said, they only showed like this this tape uh, in the in the in space. Whoa! Uh, get excited for that. Um, rumors suggest, and this is from uh, the Switch, so this probably will also come to the Nintendo Switch. Of course, Telltale games will release on every phone, everything that you have on you um and as a result most of them will run pretty shitty (laughs) exactly exactly so rumors suggest that this will launch every other uh, every week so they will have episode one up and then next week the episode two will be interesting of course they have a um batman series right now they're doing a pretty good job with that it's like every month um but yeah so they have something with dz and with marvel so telto is making some big bucks there Rocket League next free uh, DLC was also announced. Um, comes out very soon. They have a new arena there. Then we saw some uh, Zelda gameplay as well. Looks pretty cool. Uh, and yeah, well, a Warframe trailer. Um, Lawbreakers was also there. Halo Wars 2. Um, well, yeah. I think that's about it. And so it's one of those things where with the Game Awards where... I honestly thought that the it was lackluster mostly because you in one case you have the fact that Jeff Keighley allowed Kojima to throw show out a cinematic trailer that showed absolutely nothing about the game other than more dead babies and random cryptic crap that just looks really know, I weird. I think that they, they can really look into that trailer. Of course, the, it's like a really a marketing trailer with oh no, if you play the two together you see that the baby transforms to the other trailer stuff like that it's pretty insane uh, got got a lot of people hyped but they they want to have a little sort of open world uh third person like some sort of i get the division five uh in the way he describes his game so co-op open world probably some rpg elements um so yeah the, the, i really it, it's really awesome to see the skeletons and like the tank or whatever it was like riding on the bridge and I can really see that that is like the world where those enemies live and you have to like escape them or kill them in order to stay alive so it was cool to see the enemies we will be fighting the like world it's like pretty scary and I already got a 
yeah, I already wanted to explore that. So that's what the trailer really did well. And of course, like I said, it's like, okay, I have a very awesome Death Stranding trailer. Do you want it? Because I don't have any gameplay. Jeff Keighley would not be like, okay, no, 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 don't do it. Well, and and it sounds like uh, Jeff Keighley wanted to propose to Kojima on stage as well. So, I mean, he yeah, loves the guy. That was a little bit weird. Yeah, I, he, I he, he loves the guy uh, more than he should, you know, say on the stage. It was kind of really awkward, and it looked like Kojima even felt like it was awkward in some, some moments of that. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, I mean... It really comes down to the fact that I, I, the only reason why I think he was able to do that, especially such a cryptic trailer like that um, from such a big name, is because he's Kojima, because they're friends. I don't think that because of the, the issue with No Man's Sky and because of what he said prior to the Game Awards show, uh, with Dauntless, I can somewhat understand it, but with a game with a name behind it like Kojima's, I mean, a cinematic trailer is going to cause a lot of hype, and for what he didn't want to do before the show, I think that he basically resulted in just sort of doing that because he showed off that trailer, which is overhype a game no one knows anything about other than it's going to be creepy and odd, and it's from. But Kishima. on the other hand, if you if you compare this with No Man's Sky, and I I, I do do get your point, he was really clear uh, in saying that yeah, I want more gameplay, and if we look at all the things that they showed, it was really not more gameplay, so didn't really make a lot of sense, but. With that stranding, it's Kojima, and if we look at this, like it, what he what he did, like in the last couple of years, even decades, it's like amazing games. So why yeah. would this be any different? Um, I mean, with No Man's Sky, it was like this this studio that made Joe Danger a PSN game for ten bucks or something like that, and now they made this like super ambitious space game that everyone that that should change your life. Well, yeah, that that's. I mean, that's weird of itself, and with Death Stranding, it's like, wow, the trailers are awesome, the, yeah, it looks, the world is pretty cool, there are some smart things in this trailer as well, there were a lot of, like, hints, some easter eggs to Metal Gear Solid, um, and of course, it's Kojima, he, he should not be, like, at every show, talking about his game all the time, he should be making the game, come back, show something, and release it in... Yeah, like a year after that, something like that, or even a year earlier. But he isn't, and yeah. I think I think he will, though. I think that every Game Awards show, every single E3, we're going to see something Death Stranding related. Uh, I think that's just the nature of the beast. He's trying to hype it up a lot. Maybe not him personally, but I know he probably, since he's in sort of the, their, you know, Sony's in his sort of pockets in a lot of uh, degree. I'm sure that they're wanting to have him push it at least a little bit here and there because they know it's going to cause a lot of hype and they know it's going to be a big success and they know most likely it's not going to be a bad game because of his track mm. record. So, yeah. and, and I mean, with Metal Gear Solid 5, I thought that game was really lackluster because it didn't seem like he was able to finish it. Like, it seemed like there was a lot of stuff missing. A lot of people said that, because I quit it halfway through, that the second half of the game was a copy of the first half. And I completely think that's all Konami's fault. So I don't fault him for that. Um, but, and I think that the Death Stranding, because of its theme, is going to be a very interesting title. I just want to see more gameplay from it. And I want him to be silent with it, at least for like a year. Let let him yeah, get a gameplay that. trailer. But I know that's not going to happen because realistically and business-wise, it's not smart to do that. Because the hype train will stop a little bit and you don't want that to happen. You want it to completely just keep going and going and going and cause a No Man's Sky effect. But this time, hopefully with a positive reception. Um, but yeah, as far as other things to the Game Awards show, I thought it was also incredibly silly that uh, they had Doom have their soundtrack sort of be played. And then they decided to have, I think it was two or three random artists pop up that have nothing to do with video games and just completely bore the crowd completely for a while with their, their performances. Um, I forget who it was, but I think it was two rap artists or hip hop artists that were on stage. And it's like really, this is Run the Game the Awards show. Yeah, this is this is the Game Awards show. You should be celebrating games. Like, where's an orchestra playing Legend of Zelda themes or random other themes? You know, where's that at, Jeff Keighley? Like, why are you trying to sell out because you know these people are going to pay you a ton of money to be able to perform on that stage in front of that many people with that venue? Like, it, it just seems to me like there's a lot of stuff thrown in there, like the um, the Razor 
uh, mascot that was walking around doing random things. That was just throwing in there and being making it a, a very overly commercialized mess of a show when it didn't have to be that way. Like the, the first rendition of it when he initially brought it back was good and I thought that there could have been a lot of progress made but over the years it's become more and more commercialized like we saw with the Spike Award show and I don't want him to be making the same mistakes but I think he is because he's kind of having to run it all himself and because of that he's trying to make as much money as possible and I think that that's causing the show to be derailed a bit and I think that if he keeps going in that direction it's going to cause the show to be a fluff fest. So overall I mean I, I, I agree completely with Total Biscuits video about it. I, I don't if I had to rate it I would probably give it a 6 out of 10 6.5 out of 10 just because there was a lot of stuff wrong with it it didn't really celebrate games it was more of like a commercialized game show with the reviews I mean with the the awards themselves not really being super emphasized there was a lot of times where um, they should have just explained certain aspects of the award like this is what this award goes to here's the winner type thing but, yeah, they, but they just they, completely they changed fell flat. that because a lot of people don't watch this for the awards um and they watch it for the announcement so they the awards are like yeah it should be faster and faster um that, that that's what they learned from the previous years as far as i know so that's why they probably yeah didn't do it because yeah on your web on the website you can read all about it right so yeah i don't know it, i can see where where you're coming from with um, some commercialized things and that they for example didn't have the time to give like give away all the uh, awards while they did have time for a razor uh, sponsor guy to to play a game or something like that um, so that, that was a little bit weird then and the random the skits man the skits were awful <laughs> I'm not sure if he caught those, but there is no, there's no, ran no. yeah there was random skits with this this run random dude that was just like doing random things, and it, it was so cringy. Oh my god, like it, it kind of reminded me of like the old X play um, skits, but way more cringy and way more awful. So oh wow yeah okay yeah yeah I, <laughs> like I said I, it was like a, a, a weird time for me to to watch it. It was like yeah. two thirty and I had to do stuff like the other day, so I decided to just look at all the gameplay trailers and the stuff they showed at the end and if we look at the whole list i think they did a very good job and no if if this wasn't there i mean that this should also be stressed is that if jeff Keighley didn't make this happen didn't make this award show a thing then we would still be sitting here with no information on prey no um mass effect gameplay or they would probably have showed it somewhere else but no, maybe you no know, guardians of the galaxy game announcement right now um, the new game from Dauntless would not be on my radar, for example. I may may have seen it, but yeah, now now I care. Um, and of course, The Walking Dead season three, we could see that already. Um, it's like that we we now know some stuff. We saw some new Zelda gameplay. Of course, we still are waiting for that game and to see some more gameplay for that because this is a good way to lure like a lot of publishers in and say, hey, you want to do something because EA. Uh, Nintendo and Microsoft everyone is doing something so you should probably do right so then we get to see some awesome new things from new games that are coming in 2017 and um, okay yeah maybe the show was a little bit yeah cringeworthy sometimes and there were some other stuff but there were also some other things like the the guy that that, that won like the dragon cancer uh, game that that was pretty emotional and stuff like that you give this guy a stage, a guy that normally is like sitting in his uh, on his desk making this video game, but now he's out there in the world. He's talking about he, it. It gets an an emotional impact that he really, yeah, his his life, his heart was put put into this game, and normally we would never see that. We would never hear that he might make a statement on a website or something like that. But now he was there. He was telling this story and. <clears throat> That, that that really made made an impact on many people, uh, myself included. So that is also stuff that we normally don't see a lot. And of course, there are things that could be go wrong. And on the other hand, he probably needs to make money as well. I mean, they they need to buy this convention center. They have to. They had the host. They had I Justine and this uh, game theorist uh, guy hosting some stuff. And it's expensive to make. And um, 
maybe the 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 like artist was a little bit weird i could see that but on the other hand if you have like a Zelda orchestra i don't know if people i mean for one thing i mean these these rappers just put down an apple computer and rap around well if you have like a Zelda orchestra it's like 30 people and they all it's like way too much shit it's like way too expensive and maybe it will put people on the stream to sleep because if you don't I have actually, anything to do- I actually think it's cheaper than the rappers, quite <clears throat> honestly, because orchestra, they, they tend not to charge as much as a, a mainstream hip-hop artist, for example, just because mm. their craft isn't... I mean, when you think of orchestra, right, it's not as sort of grand stage as it should be, at least in my opinion, uh, because our culture, at least American culture, doesn't put as much weight on it. Um, so I think that they could have gotten, even if it's not like the best orchestra ever, they could have gotten like a B-rated orchestra, for example, to perform video game music, and it would have been good enough. And I think a lot of people would have enjoyed that in a show that's dedicated to video games. Um, and that's that's really the thing, is, and that's why I have an issue with it, is it's supposed to be a show dedicated to video games, but it's so much isn't with all the commercialization and the, the hip-hop artists that are randomly on stage. It just seems like they're trying to sort of money grab it more than they need to. And if you have an issue with your venue, get a different venue that's cheaper. Like there's, it, you don't need a massive venue that costs a ton for this type but of thing. But you you don't you don't want this to be like some silly thing in the corner. You want to really uh, show the other people that the game awards it's it's also a thing that you want to celebrate or then you want to. Um, give the the prizes to games that really deserve it to developers that put their lives into these games and to do that in some sort of small uh, area it would be like a joke so they don't want that as well but the first so, one didn't have this issue like the first one i didn't find no but it as... gets better and better you, you don't go back well it's that, got that's... worse and worse though <laughs> like no, but they, i mean they in, in terms of space and in terms of like presentation and stuff like that i don't know i thought the first one was uh presented fine i think a lot of people really enjoyed the first one and they should have just built off of it and not tried to do like stupid stuff that p- gamers don't care about like the announcements i agree you know that they were good it's just there was a lot of other fluff that was in there that should have been dedicated more towards the awards um that that actually have meaning or maybe some behind the scenes development videos for example like you know team up with bioware to be like hey we want to do like a three minute promo reel of your guys studio behind the scenes you know fluff it up all you want that we're great and everything we just want gamers to be able to see that this is a celebration of games uh, maybe some behind the scenes of Andromeda or something. So I, I think gamers would rather have that than some random hip hop artist on stage or some random razor dancing around like a, an idiot or some random ass comedy skit that's cringeworthy. Like I was looking at chat and a lot of people are like, what the hell is going on with this thing? Like it just, it, and it's just unnecessary, right? It's mm. so unnecessary. They could cut the show's time down if need be. Like if they're like, oh, well, you know, we don't want the, the show to be a certain, you know, amount of time or we want it to be a certain amount of time because we feel like it's best for the show, then fill it with something that's actually worthy of the time or shorten the amount of time so that way you don't have to rent the venue out as long. Uh, whatever whatever the case may be, make it a celebration of games as it's supposed to be. A celebration of games that's supposed to be is definitely going to bring you in enough money to sustain it. To be able to pay you a modest salary to put it on and a gamers will appreciate it a lot more as a mm-hmm. result and okay. I, I just don't want it to see it become another spike awards that eventually becomes a completely terrible award show that no one watches because it became over commercialized <laughs> and just completely yeah. stereotypical and just garbage overall mm-hmm. no, what okay. did what did yeah. you think of the awards though overall as far as like who won game of the year best multiplayer best rpg so on and so forth yeah, I think uh, it was pretty expected that Overwatch would uh, take the award because it was a, it's of course on every platform. Um, a lot of people could play it, and it it's really something that that will stay. It's really something that we'll, we will probably talk about in five years, and it will be a totally different game. So, and yeah, from launch till now, it's already a different game. You have the three v three now, and that's like a pretty big hit in Overwatch. So yeah, it, it I, I totally agree with with the awards and. Uh, yeah, Pokemon Go got all the family, uh, all the awards that it was nominated for. Wanted to see some love for Ratchet and Clank, but I can see why they go went with uh, Pokemon Go, of course. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I, um, I, I thought the, the best RPG award was it struck a nail on the head uh, with Witcher getting its last award that it will ever get um, because of the fact that obviously there's not any more content planned for that game. They're working on Cyberpunk. Uh, I thought yes. that the, the Game Awards, uh, the Game of the Year award was accurate. I, I, I obviously predicted Uncharted 4 would probably get it because I thought they were going to go more towards a game that seemed to have a higher production in terms of how much was yeah, produced yeah. for it, uh, rather than just sort of a shooter that was thrown together after um, a previous project sort of died out and they just wanted to use the assets over again. But I, I give it to Blizzard. You know, they created a phenomena within the multiplayer space and the assets that they've thrown in, what they utilized from Project Titan, ended up becoming a very, very, very polished shooter that a lot of people will love from here until you know the next five years or even longer yeah, so I, I don't i don't really fault them for giving it to overwatch at all um as mm. far as best multiplayer i think that was also overwatch um best indie was inside if i remember off the top of my head no. or was it something uh, else yeah 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 well, yeah you're right yeah, yeah. so i'm um, playing that by the way right now are you awesome cool. yeah and i don't really fault any of those awards i think that it was accurate um, as far as what yeah. I thought was going to get awards. And so, yeah, I, I don't really have an issue with that at all. Mm -hmm. No, I thought the awards were fine as well.